Hey everybody and welcome back to our Let's Code series. This is season two. So in today's video, we are going to start setting up our map screen. Now I appreciate that we don't really have much else in the way of content in the game at the moment, but what we're doing is we're putting together the blocks that we're gonna build our game around and then we can make it as intuitive as possible. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a new property inside our place class, which we're going to do just here. So we're going to say at property. And then we're going to say define and we're going to call this one map icon. And we're just going to say self like so. So all we need to do really is we need to create a URL which we are going to send to our map screen. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create our output variable and we're going to say, and we're going to call this one images slash places slash, and then we're going to create a new folder and we're going to call this one icons like that. And then we're just going to pop that in there. Now what we need to do is we need to add the file name so what we're going to do is we're going to add our code friendly name so we're going to say self dot df name and then we're going to add dot png because it's going to be an icon on a map we want it to be a ping file and that's cool but what i also want to do is i want to create a new variable called alt output like that go spell output correctly and we're going to call this the same thing but what we're going to do is we're going to add some more stuff in there like this so we're going to say cf name and then we're going to add some more stuff under there so we're going to say underscore there and then we're going to add the str of our sequence or our chapter now we haven't, uh, let's just double check. So we haven't actually added that variable to the game yet. So what we're going to do is we're going to add that. Now we're going to say default and we're going to start off with our chapter and that's just going to be the number zero. And then we're going to say default sequence and you could call this page or sequence or whatever you want to. I'm going to go with sequence. I'm going to call this zero as well. And what this is going to do, this is going to allow us to create a, a sequence of events in different chapters which are going to tell us which labels to activate at any given time. Now that sounds like gibberish and it kind of is. Uh, I'm going to explain that in a later video. But for now, all you need to know is that that's a number that's going to change every time we move on in the game so we're going to say chapter plus underscore string sequence like that and we're going to add a plus there so we need to actually call those so we need to say global chapter and global sequence like that and now we know that we're actually accessing the correct variables. And there we go. So that's our file name for that one. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to check if this file exists. If it does, we're going to return this one. If it doesn't, we're going to check if this one exists. If it does, we're going to return it. And if not, we're going to return a nothing or a default icon depending on which way you want to go but so for the first thing we want to do is we need to say if renpy.loadable open brackets and we're going to say alt output there we go then we're going to return and i'm just going to copy that and paste it there and now i'm going to say nothing because what will happen is we're going to say if that exists return that when we hit return it will do what we need to do and then it will jump straight out of the loop so we don't need to put an else clause in here we can say also we can put an else clause in there but it's not necessary 
So next thing we're going to say is if renpy.loadable and we're just going to type output in there and we're going to say return output. So now the only case we haven't yet uh, come up with is the default. So if that one doesn't exist and that one doesn't exist then we will just simply return a default output, which we're going to define now. So return def output like that. So we're going to copy this and we're going to pop it in there. And all we're going to do is stick that in there and then we're just going to say none.png so what we need to do is to remember to create a none.png file in our icons which is just going to be a little exclamation mark in the corner or something a placeholder image and other than that we are good to go so now when we call for map icon or rather the place dot map icon it will return one of these files and that's going to allow us to create image buttons on the screen and as we go through the game sequence, if, for example, we're in chapter one, sequence two, and we want a specific icon to appear for our location, maybe there's a location that's on fire, or there's some kind of party happening or something like that, then it will display that image as long as we name it with its code friendly name, underscore the chapter number, underscore, the sequence number dot png otherwise it will just return the default location map on name so that's all good so now we need to find a way of putting all of this on the screen so we're going to have to create a nav screen so that's what we're going to do now so we're going to come to our screens folder and we're going to create a new file and we're going to call it navmap.rpy like that and then we're just gonna call a screen and we're just gonna call it nav map like so. And we don't need any use statements in this file because we are creating pretty much all new content. So all the first thing we need to do is create a frame like that. And we're gonna say background none. We're gonna spell none correctly. Then we're gonna say y align. 0.5 we're going to say x align 0.5 we're going to give it a size so i'm going to say maybe x size of a thousand and we're going to go back and spell size correctly as well and we're going to give it a y size of about 600 now then we want a background for our map so we are going to assume at this moment in time that we already have that um, what I would suggest you do is you keep a note in notepad or something like that of all the image files that you have yet to complete. It's not going to destroy the universe if you don't do it. It just means that the game will prompt you when you can't find specific images or it will just show nothing. So, you know, it's good to try and keep on top of this. So we're going to say add UI. Um, yep, we'll keep it as a UI folder slash map slash map underscore bg dot png and what that's going to do is it's going to fill our frame with the background of our map essentially so what you could do is you could create that folder as an aid memoir now but we will just carry on scooting on for now so we're going to say for q in now we need to remember what our list of places is called so we're going to go for classes and underneath here you can see locations so we're going to rc come back to our screen and we're just going to say for q in locations if q dot now we need to come back to our classes again and just check what that property is called so in our place is is active so copy that control c there if q dot is active and we're going to create an image button and this is where we're going to use that useful little uh, property that we created. So we're going to say hover and we're going to say q.map icon and we're going to say idle 
is Q dot map icon two, so it doesn't change when we hover over it. You could, by all means, create two images, one a hover and one an idle, and then reference each one of those individually. But for simplicity's sake, we're not gonna do that here. So we need to say focus underscore mask equals, no, we don't need an equals there, sorry. Let's say true. Action. Now we need to do some stuff. So we're going to set variable and we're going to set the click type variable. So click type, well that all correctly, click type. And we're going to say nav. So all we're going to do at this point is we're telling the game that we've clicked on a navigation button. Now we're going to say return q.name like so. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a variable called click type. So we're going to control C that and we're going to go into our defaults and defines and we're going to say default equals none and we're going to keep it as a string just to make life easier so at the moment when we start the game it's going to see that we haven't clicked on any button it's actually going to see nothing because we haven't referenced this variable anywhere else in the game yet but that's what we're going to do so what i'm also going to do is i'm going to create a tooltip for this so hovered and we can say tt.action spell it all correctly and we're going to say go to plus q dot name coolio so that's just going to set up the tool tips for if we use them later on or rather when we use them later on that's going to send the uh, tooltip text to the tooltip screen which we haven't created yet we will do that in a latter video but essentially this is going to do everything we need it to do now what we could do as well is have a toggle so that when we select a icon on our map it automatically closes the map which i would say is probably a really good idea so what we're going to do is we're going to say toggle variable open our speech like that get rid of that put a comma there so that it knows to move on an instruction and we're going to say nav menu like that now we need to create a default variable for that one as well defaults defines and that's currently set to false okay so let's quickly run through what we've done so you know what's going on we've created a screen and in that screen we've created a 1000 by 600 frame in the center of the screen you don't have to have it in the center of the screen you don't have to have it 1000 by 600. you can put this in any position and any size you like as long as you make the icons the correct size for the map that you're using then we are going to put our map background in the back of that frame and then on top of that we are creating image buttons for every location if they are active. If they're inactive nothing will happen it will just ignore it and move through the loop. If it is active it will create an image button with our map icon property file that we created in the classes file. If we click on it it is going to tell the game loop that the click type variable is nav. It's going to toggle the nav menu value, which we're going to talk about momentarily, and then it will return the name of the location that we have clicked on. Cool beans. So now we can go into our script. And as you can see, we've got our menu screen there. And we've got uh, <laughs> at the moment, we don't have anything else. And what we're going to do at some point in a later on when we've created more screens is we're going to actually call for our main UI screen which is set up here which has our BG image and if the variable which we have created in the defaults defines if nav menu is true it's going to show the menu on the screen we'll have a button in the corner of the screen which toggles that on and off once we've selected our location it will toggle the nav menu back to false and it will take us to the new location that's really all there is to it on this one guys so 
a bit more preemptive stuff. We can't do any testing right now because we haven't got the kind of framework. We're just creating the bricks at the moment. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you found that useful. Let me know what you think in the comments below and we will see each other next time. Take care of yourself, guys. Bye-bye.